working at the cave in Mishawaka for a hundred years. Fans have come here, but the team that draws the most ire from the caveman fandom is the Penn Kingsmen, and they come tonight for the renewal of the backyard ball on the 46th game of the week. How you doing, everybody? Alongside Angelo DiCarlo and the Hall of Famer Bo Hunt, it's Chuck Freebie. Great to have you with us for another exciting night of high school basketball on TV 46. The Penn Kingsmen, everybody expected a drop off this year. After all, they had Mr. Basketball last season in Marcus Burton. But Barrett Kuhlman's team has won 15 games. They battled through injuries, and they're getting healthy again at just the right time. I think this has been one of the brightest spots of any team in the entire area. Yes, they were really good last year, but not only did they lose Marcus Burton, but they lost the entire starting five. They lost their Hall of Fame coach. They have a new coach, and here they are, and you're right, they're getting healthy. They've been injury plagued, but now they're starting to get those guys back, and they're getting back just in time to be healthy for the tournament next week. Well, the Mishawaka Capeman, they come in with a record of 15 and six, but they're a bit disappointed. They had a chance to win their first outright conference title since 1940 Saturday night and lost at Wawasee. Perhaps the tonic to get them back on pace just walked into this gym. Well, I, I think it helps a lot when it's your arch rival in that next game because if it's any other opponent, there could be that hangover factor because of that disappointment because you expected maybe to win that game on Saturday and make a little history and you didn't. But now you're fixing your arch rival. They've had Marcus Burton the last few years. This is your opportunity to get those guys from the other side in the grocery store game, as they like to say, Corey Yeoman and Chris Giesman. So I think they want this one bad, and this will be a big way to get back in the right column heading into sectionals as well. Let's build on that with Bo Hunt patrolling the sidelines tonight. And Bo, we had the sectional draw on Sunday, so it's natural for teams to look ahead. But it would not be natural for anybody to look past this game. Yeah, when you're looking at this game, it, there's no conference implication on this game. There's no sectional on it. But it's the backyard brawl. It's Penn versus Mishawaka. Parents work together from either side. Relatives go to one school, and then they transfer to the other school. So there's no love loss between these two teams and a lot of bragging rights on the line tonight. It is rare that both of these teams have 15 wins when they meet. That's how intense we expect this game to be tonight. And we'll get you ready for it with our St. Joseph County Police Department pregame show and our keys to win next on the 46th Game of the Week. This is the WHME-TV 46 High School Basketball Game of the Week. Brought to you by Bill's Heating, Health Markets, Tony Letcher, St. Joseph County Police Department, Tire Rack, Health Link, Crown Trophy, Ben Soft Pretzels, API St. Andrews Products, Imagineering Finishing Technologies, and the IHSAA. And this edition of the 46th Game of the Week being brought to you in part by the St. Joseph County Police Department. Join the team and help protect and serve our community. We welcome you back inside the cave in Mishawaka as we get you ready for Penn and Mishawaka tonight. And on our St. Joseph County Police Department pregame show, we begin with the keys to win for the Penn Kingsmen. They are led in scoring by Maverick Brown, a 6'1 senior who scores 12 points with eight rebounds a game. He is a physical force on the inside, one of the reasons he's been recruited to play football at Taylor University. And he'll get some help on the outside from Trey Miller, a 6'4 senior averaging 11 and a half points a game. He is a three point sniper who's been in double figures in 14 games this season. The keys to win for Barrett Coleman and the Penn Kings. They got to protect the paint, rebound well, and prevent Mitchell Walker from scoring in the paint. They got to win the transition game, and they got to contest every shot. Here's Barrett Coleman, first year head coach at Penn, on the rivalry with Mitchell Walker. Obviously, the, the short bus ride is a good reminder. You know, it's like, hey, these guys have grown up together. They know each other. 
uh, the, the competition between football and all sports, it, it just kind of, it's, it's been evi evident since day one when I showed up at Penn that uh, it's kind of the Bethel-Chesterton game. It's the, or not Bethel, the, the Valpo-Chesterton game, the Bethel-Grace game, what, whatever those big rivalry games are that gets everybody excited. And, and that's what's fun. It's what makes high school basketball, these rivalry games that kind of get the juices flowing and the bragging rights and everything that, that doesn't matter but all matters. And so uh, 20 years from now, our seniors and their seniors will remember this moment. And we want to make sure uh, we leave and uh, make a great memory. For one last game here at Mishawaka High School, we'll have a Fisher as a key player. It's been that way for, I don't know, the last decade or so. Brady Fisher, the 6'4 senior, is the leading scorer for this caveman basketball team. 13 points, seven rebounds a game, all conference selection. He leads this team in steals and offensive rebounds. And he'll get a lot of help on the inside from 6'3 senior Cooper Pritchett, averaging 10 points and five rebounds a game. Just a gritty player, one of the better defenders on the team. Does a lot of those little things, Anj, that make a difference between winning and losing. Keys to win for Bodie Bender in the game. No second chances, can't give Penn those opportunities. Shoot those high percentage shots and know and execute the scouting report. Bodie Bender in his second year here at Mishawaka on his team, bouncing back after letting an outright conference championship slip away on Saturday. Yeah, I thought we had a pretty good practice yesterday. Um, I thought we got from drill to drill yesterday, which was good to see. And I thought we were a little bit, lo a little bit more locked in. And yeah, you probably could put that on this being a rivalry, rivalry game and Penn coming to the, to the cave. So yeah, I thought it was a good practice. I think our guys are ready to go and I think they're ready to play well. For a midweek game, boy, the cave is rocking tonight, but you can understand why. Arch rival Penn has come on over. We'll get you ready with the starting lineups and opening tip after this, South 46. This edition of the TV 46 High School Basketball Game of the Week is being brought to you by Tire Rack. TireRack.com is the way tire buying should be. And the atmosphere for high school basketball is the way it should be here at the Cave in Mishawaka. Great crowd on hand, great rivalry. You probably want to know who the starting lineups are. That's why we have Angelo DiCarlo. <laughs> Ethan Good, a 5'10 junior guard, making his fifth start of the season. Over the last four games, averaging five assists per game. Casey Finn, a 6'3 senior guard, also his fifth start of the season, averaging 7.8 points per game over the last four games. Trey Miller, a 6'4 senior forward, he started all 20 games, 12 points per game, 48 three-pointers. Maverick Brown, a 6'1 senior forward, also started all 20 games, 12 points, eight rebounds a game. He also leads the team in steals. And Noel, Nolan McCullough, a 6'3 senior forward, has started all 20 games, four points per game, committed to Dayton for football. And for the Mishawaka Cavemen, as they turn off the lights here at the cave, they will start Jackson Snyder, a 5'10 junior guard. He's an all-state linebacker in football, averaging three and a half points per game and a team leading 59 assists. Cooper Pritchett is a 6'3 senior forward, 10 points, five rebounds per game, had the game winner in the OT win over Warsaw. Rasan Johnson, a 6'3 junior, 6'3 senior wing, 10 points per game, second in assists. And Brady Fisher, a 6'4 senior forward, 13 points, seven rebounds per game. He leads the team in points, rebounds, steals, and blocks. And rounding out the starting lineup for the Cavemen, Anthony Nelson, a six foot senior guard, three points per game, and a team leading 17 threes. They don't shoot many of them. He leads the way with 17. This is the 77th all time meeting between Penn and Mishawaka in a series that dates back to 1962. It was very lopsided a year ago, mainly because Penn had a fellow by the name of Marcus Burton, who was Mr. Basketball in the state of Indiana. I've heard of him. He went off that night, and the Kingsmen won it by 41 over at the Palace. The officials for tonight's game, that's Andy Heideck. He's working with Greg Humiston and David Wolford. Good local crew. It's as simple as black and white. Kingsman in the black, Mishawaka in the white. Glad to join us for high school basketball on TV 46. 
The tip won by the Penn Kingsman. Maverick Brown misses the layup. And the rebound knocked out of bounds. It'll go to Penn. Penn comes in here with a record of 15 and 5 overall. They have as impressive a wins, I think, as any team in the area. They've beaten Riley. They've beaten Northridge. Those are a couple of really good ones right there. But their most recent loss came at the hands of South Bend, Washington, in a game where Penn was without two of its starters. But give credit to Ryan Vargas' team. They played very well that night over at the Great Western Four. A couple of those starters are in uniform and available to play tonight, but not starting as well for the Kingsmen as they work them back into health, getting ready for the tournament next week. And that's what Barrett Coleman really wants to use these last two games of the season for, to try to get his team back to the way they were clicking when they were at 100%. They haven't had everybody in uniform since beating John Glenn back on February 1st. Ethan Good kicks it outside to Trey Miller. Great defense here early on by the Cavemen. And Miller throws it away into the backcourt. One thing Bodie Bender really prides his team on is defense. Well, and they're showing it right here in the early going. That was a 51-second possession for Penn that didn't muster much of anything. Brian so, Custom Homes in Michiana is, is Michiana's premier home builder. Come visit one of our exclusive neighborhoods or let Klein Custom Homes build on your property anywhere in Michiana. For more info, visit us at KleinCustomHomes.com. Mishawaka 15 and 6 overall after losing to Wawasee on Saturday night. They've won seven of their last nine, but they haven't beaten the Kingsmen since 2018. Jackson Snyder, their point guard from the wing, airballs it, and the rebound just taken away by Cooper Pritchett, and he's fouled on the way up by Maverick Brown, and that's some of the grittiness we talked about with Pritchett. Yeah, I mean, that's going to go down as a rebound, but that was much more than just a rebound. That was a 50-50 ball that you had to fight for it as you look at the replay here. Snyder well off the mark, but Pritchett really didn't even have the ball. Took it away from Maverick Brown, gets it back, and then they get the points here on the bucket for Pritchett. Jackknife jumper for Cooper Pritchett makes it 2-0 Caveman. Ethan Good handles the ball up top, guarded by Jackson Snyder. Caveman open and man-to-man. -man. Here's Maverick Brown. Good, found a seam against Snyder and took it to the hole for two. Good, a 5'10 junior only averages three points a game, but he has been much more impressive since having to fill into the starting lineup. Rasan Johnson, he's guarded by Casey Finn. Finn with a little bit of height on him, and Johnson had to throw it out to Anthony Nelson in a hurry. Finn really bodying up Johnson well down on the baseline. Good defense by both teams early on. Gave credit to the cavemen, but Penn also showing some very good defense here in the early going. Here's Brady Fisher spinning on Nolan McCullough. Couldn't get it to go, and an over-the-back called on Cooper Pritchett. Michiana Sports Cards in Granger loves all things sports. Check out their amazing supply of cards as well as jerseys, helmets, and memorabilia. Michiana Sports Cards buys and sells. Visit them on Facebook and check them out at michianasportscards.com. So here's a welcome site for Kingsman fans. The return of number 13 to the lineup. That's Dominic Bonner, who's been out since the John Glenn game with a foot injury that he suffered in practice the day after the Glenn game. And Bonner gets the ball in the paint and takes it strong to the hole for two. He averaged 11 points a game and gives the Kingsman a 4-2 lead. Coming back from an ankle injury, that ankle looks pretty decent here in the early going. So that's good to see for Dominic Bonner. Got it celebrating a team victory in a drill. I said he's too young for that. Rasan Johnson goes in strong and scores for the Cavemen to knot it up at four. On what was otherwise expected to be a very easy going light practice and did turn that way in the final minutes unfortunately for the Kingsman. Maverick Brown guarded by Brady Fisher. A couple big boys there. Here's McCullough trying to feed it down low in the pass knocked out of bounds by Johnson. Barrett Coolman telling McCullough you got to take that one up strong. Thank you to Pasquale Rulli's Pizza on Division Street in Mishawaka for feeding our crew tonight. If you want some excellent pizza or pasta, Pasquale's is open 4 to 9 p.m. Tuesday through Saturday for dine-in and carry-out.
Thanks again to Pasquale Rulli's Pizza in Mishawaka. I was told by one member of the crew, perhaps the best food they had all season long. And that's saying a lot, considering all the great vendors we've had this year on 46. We have. They better, they better watch themselves saying stuff like that. <laughs> Here's Bonner with a great spin move to the hole for two. That was vintage Dominic Bonner right there. He's back and looking good. Brady Fisher trying to go one on one with John Beatty and guarding him. Here's Johnson slicing to the hole for two. He's got a quick first step, folks. As good as the defense has been early on, I'm impressed with the offensive execution, especially off the dribble for both teams. Well, and that's the thing, because that's what it takes against a good defensive opponent, and that's what we've seen, especially since Bonner's been in the game. It's been an uptick offensively here for Penn. Even there, a missed shot, but it was a good look. Snyder found Pritchard ahead of everybody for two. That was the combination that won them the game in overtime over Warsaw. It's a little surprising sometimes when you think of this Mishawaka team, but they do very well in transition. And that's one of the things Barrett Kuhlman mentioned before the game. Here's another transition opportunity. Rasan Johnson couldn't get to go. Pritchett will go to the line for two. White House cleaning and restoration in Mishawaka supports both teams tonight, but Penn maybe just a little bit more. Contact White House cleaning and restoration for carpet cleaning, or if you have water or fire damage to your home or business, visit whrestoration.com to learn more. Personally, I thought the slap of the backboard by Bedient would likely result in a goaltending call. It didn't. And now Cooper Pritchett, a 77% free throw shooter, misses his first. And Mishawaka will make some wholesale substitutions here, putting Landon Johns, a 6'1 sophomore, into the game. And we also see Jack Troyer, a 6'1 senior, check in. Pritchett hits the second. He now has five. And he'll come out in favor of Trey Thomas. A lot of substitutions here in the first five minutes for each team, really, here. Well, it's so, such an intense game. And it's so warm in this gym tonight. You're going to have to keep some fresh legs out there on the floor. You made the right choice taking off your jacket. I, I might be locked in here to be able to have to keep this one on at this point. <laughs> <laughs> Ethan Good handles it up top. Sometimes Sage veterans make moves like that. <laughs> McCullough with the lob down low to Bedient. Couldn't get it to go, though. Ethan Good just pilfers the rebound away from everybody. Bonner for three. That's short. And the rebound to Brady Fisher. The other end. Three on the way, and it rims out. That was Landon Johns, and that's one of his specialties, is the three-pointer. Nice pass inside to Fisher for the bucket. Brady Fisher with his first basket of the game. He averages 13 a contest. Mishawaka with a five-point lead. Good was going strong to the basket, but we've got a moving screen called on Nolan McCullough. Imagineering Finishing Technologies in South Bend is globally known as the knowledge source for metal finishing solutions. Like the teams in this game, Imagineering is always working towards a great finish. As you see the replay there, Fisher finishing strong. So the cavemen are able to get to the basket with ease here in the first quarter, and they build a five-point lead. Let's see if they can continue to break down the Penn defense. Fisher made a good catch on a ball he wasn't expecting, and bullies his way into the basket. Missed it, though, and Brown gets the rebound. I have no idea how that did not go in. Neither does Brady. Bonner with some slick handles there to get through traffic, checks the sideline for the play call. McCullough put on the brakes, found Maverick Brown. Brown spins past Troyer, but missed the reverse. Ethan Good with the garbage lay-in. Ethan Good just 5'10", but has been in the right place at the right time for some critical rebounds here in the early minutes of this game. Snyder, now here's Johns. Finds Fisher, who gives it off to Snyder. It's blocked by McCullough, and the rebound comes to Penn. 
Less than a minute to go in an action-packed first quarter here at the Cave. Good, trying to spin on Snyder. It's Miller for three, and it's Miller time. It's sponsored by Klein Custom Homes. Trey Miller's 49th three-pointer of the season ties the game at 11. Brady Fisher as the cavemen want to hold for the last shot. Battle the, of the quarterbacks Jackson's. there for a moment there with McCullough and Fisher going at it. And now again. Fisher lost it off his foot. Half court. No, it's a lob to Thomas for two. What a play. How about Brady Fisher figuring that one out on the fly and finding Trey Thomas as though it were football season. Keith Kinder says, I've seen this before. 13-11 <laughs> caveman after one on 46. This edition of the 46th Game of the Week being brought to you in part by Imagineering Finishing Technologies, IFT, where quality is a way of life. And a way of life for us, a Bo Hunt courtside report. It's sponsored by Bill's Hinning. Bo, your thoughts on the first eight minutes? Well, we need, knew these two teams were going to be very physical in a low-scoring game. So the way they really came out and pounded the paint is exactly what we thought was going to happen. Continue to see that rest of the game. Both these teams trying to take advantage of underneath, getting the ball inside, working for that good shot. Very physical, as we talked about, guys. And the pace is right at where the caveman would want it. This factoid brought to us by White House Cleaning and Restoration. Penn averages 55 points per game when they score below that mark and they're on pace to be well below it. The Kingsmen are just two and six. This second quarter brought to you by Monterey Mexican Grill. Mishawaka led by as many as five. They have a two point cushion to start the second. And Rasan Johnson wants people to clear out of the way. Get a screen from Cooper Pritchett. A little screen and roll and Pritchett Misfires on the jumper, the rebound of Trey Miller, and an over-the-back call on Jack Troyer. The Penn Boosters always cheer for the Kingsmen. Last year, the Boosters awarded over $79,000 to various academic clubs and teams. Support the Penn Boosters by following them on Facebook or go to pennboosters.org. Dominic Bonner will bring it up the court. Terrific defensive back on the football team. Here's Alex Hawthorne getting some action. Miller for three, that's short, but another second chance for the Kingsman, and Miller will cash it in. That was a huge concern of Bodie Bender coming in. It killed them against Wawasee, and second chance points have helped the Kingsman here tonight against Mishawaka. Trey Thomas showing some handles. Rasan Johnson guarded by Dominic Bonner. And Johnson lost the handle on it, needs some help, and he's just going to try to force something up, and that was ugly. A good defense there by Bonner, forcing a bad shot there for the Cavemen. One of the keys for Mishawaka, for Penn has been to make things difficult for Mishawaka. They did so on that possession. Well, it really helped the Cavemen to about two points here over the last four minutes of action. Hawthorne finds McCullough, now Bonner. Hawthorne, another one of those players that have been battling injuries, has been back for the last couple games, but still getting himself back up to full speed. Coming off the bench here tonight after being a starter for the better part of the season. Penn being very patient against this rugged man-to-man -man defense by the Cavemen. Nolan McCullough, not a three-point shooter. Hawthorne will occasionally hoist one. But the Kingsmen know their roles. That's one of the things that's made both teams effective this year. They know who they are and who they aren't. Trey Miller knows he can shoot the three, but he tried to drive baseline, and Rasan Johnson draws the charging call. 
This game's health tip is brought to you by Health Link, who reminds you that good vision is key to success on the field and in the classroom. Schedule a yearly eye exam at Health Link today. Health Link offers medical, dental, vision, and more. Jackson Snyder and Brady Fisher check back in. Trying to get the Mishawaka offense back on track. It's a 7-2 pen run going on right now. Although at the pace it is, it's more of a pen jog than a pen run. <laughs> Down low, the ball goes to Cooper Pritchett, and he puts it off the glass for two. Pritchett makes as good a use of the glass as just about any player in the area. Seven early points for him, giving Mishawaka their first points of the second quarter here. Three on the way by Hawthorne is off the mark, and Johnson will collect the loose change. Penn just one of four from three-point range. Johnson all the way to the hole will go to the line for two after drawing the contact. Bensoff Pretzels has been supporting high school athletics since 2008. They believe that sports are an important part of a well-rounded education and are proud to support the next generation of athletes. Find Bensoff Pretzels at the University Park Mall and at most major Notre Dame athletic events. Have a pretzel day. It's a wide out for the Caveman student body as they try to support their teammate Rasan Johnson here. And Johnson misfires on the first foul shot. He's a 61% free throw shooter for the year. Michiana Sports Cards in Granger loves all things sports. Check out their amazing supply of cards, as well as jerseys, helmets, and memorabilia. Michiana Sports Cards buys and sells. Visit them on Facebook. Check them out at michianasportscards.com. Johnson hits the free throw, and the transfer from Mishawaka to Penn, Tommy Herringer will check into the game. Herringer has had limited eligibility this year, so he has only played in the last five games. The 6'5 senior averaging three points and two and a half rebounds so far. He got a little, he heard a little heckle there from the Mishawaka student body. Ethan Good on the dribble. Herringer guarded by Cooper Pritchett. Hawthorne now, down low to Herringer. Trying to pull his way in, no charge called, and the bucket made by Herringer. One point, Caveman lead. Johnson sliced to the basket, lost it off the foot of good and out of bounds. Client Custom Homes is Michiana's premier home builder. Come visit one of our exclusive neighborhoods or let Klein Custom Homes build on your property anywhere in Michiana. For more information, visit us at kleincustomhomes.com. Inbounds pass comes to Pritchett. And another fadeaway jumper for Cooper is good. He's had a strong first half with nine. Back to a three-point caveman lead. Good. Back outside to Herringer. Here's Miller for the tie, it's short. And the rebound flagged down by Troy. Again, Penn struggling from outside the arc. Fisher, nice bounce pass to Johnson. And Johnson had it knocked away by Good before he recovered. Midway through the second quarter, coming up at halftime, you'll meet our Tony Letcher Student Athletes of the Week. Spin move by Fisher, that's a beaut. Well, Fisher has had two electrifying plays already tonight. One, an assist, and there, a bucket. Here's Good on the baseline, gives it off to Brown, and he's fouled from behind. I think they're gonna call it on Jack Troyer. If so, that's his second. That was a great pass by Good, but then great help side defense by Mishawaka, preventing Brown from getting an easy look, because at first it looked like he was gonna have an easy bucket, and then that didn't happen. Maverick Brown is at the foul line, a 73% free throw shooter on the year. Visit Monterey Mexican in Mishawaka and discover outstanding authentic Mexican dishes made daily. Open seven days a week. Make Monterey Mexican your dine-in or carry-out destination. Anthony Nelson back in for Mishawaka. Casey Finn comes in for Penn. And Brown will be checking out if he can hit this free throw.
Brown with his first two points of the night. Peyton Miambo, the freshman, also coming back from an injury, checks back in. So that's three Penn players that have been out of the lineup that they're getting back into the rotation tonight. And that can only help Barrett Kuhlman's team. No question. And again, now it's back to figuring out the chemistry all over the game again here in these final two games before section. Pritchett with a nice bounce pass outside. Nelson for three. That's an errant shot. And the rebound to Penn. Lobbed down to Herringer. Knocked out of bounds by Fisher. THK at Law LLP is a proud supporter of high school athletics. THK Law has been helping Michiana families with estate planning, elder law, business matters, and litigation for more than 25 years. Visit THKLaw.com. Long inbounds pass to Miamba. And trying to rally from a three point deficit. Both teams looking for their 16th win of the season here tonight. Miller decides to drive here, and the pull-up is good. Penn has been very good from inside the arc tonight. Miller leading the way with seven. Johnson for three. The bank is closed, but Fisher is there for the putback, and he'll go to the foul line. Floor Coverings International, Michiana salutes the Kingsmen. Whether you're looking for a tile, carpet, hardware, or luxury vinyl, they can help transform your home into your dream home. Visit michiana.floorcoveringsinternational.com. Brady Fisher at the line. Only a 57% free throw shooter, but he hits the first as Dominic Bonner comes back in the lineup for Penn. Brady, the youngest of three boys for Mike and Jen. Had a career high 22 against Warren Central. He hits both of these to make it six so far tonight. Good will slowly bring it over the stripe under two minutes to go first half. Miamba for three. That's a little too strong. And Herringer takes the rebound away, missed the first, and hammered by Pritchard on the second. That's the second foul on Cooper Pritchett. St. Joseph County Police Department here to protect and serve our community, and they're looking for more people to join their team. Employment opportunities for high school graduates are available, and they offer outstanding benefits and a true family environment on their team. Learn more at sjcindiana.com slash employment. You see Trey Thomas check back in, taking the place of Pritchett. Herringer, an 83% free throw shooter on the year, goes one of two. And we're back to a two point game. Pretty much what we expected here in the cave a rock fight. <laughs> well, you mentioned Penn doing very well inside the three. Mr. Rock has gotten all the points inside the arc as well because they just don't shoot the three. That's who they are. I mean, Bodie Bender wishes they were a better three point shooting team, but they're not, so they don't take a lot of them. I was waiting for Rasan Johnson to hoist right there. <laughs> but again, unless he's absolutely sure that he's that open, they're going to make sure they're going to play for the smarter shot. And that's what they're doing here. One of the things they talked about, the keys to win, shooting and making high percentage shots. They've done a pretty good job of that so far here tonight. A little pressure now by Penn. We'll see if they, Mishawaka is able to hold for the final shot with still 40 seconds to play in this half. It certainly appears like they want to. No question they want to. Rasan Johnson, now Ethan Good drawing that assignment. He's running out of real estate there. Fisher now made it look like he was coming down the lane and kicks it back outside. Ovation here from the Mishawaka faithful for being able to break the press there a little bit. And now they will get their opportunity to play for the final shot of the first half here. Marv Wood used to roll his socks during games. Bodie Bender watching with his hands in his pockets as Johnson Euro steps down the lane for two. 
Mishawaka's had two fabulous ends to quarters. They've resulted in buckets that give the Cavemen a four-point lead as the teams go to the locker room. And we check in with Bo Hunt for a Bills heating courtside report as he sidles up with Penn head coach Barrett Kuhlman. Go ahead, Bo. Barrett, you're in the halftime down by four. You're able to get Bonner in, get some good minutes as well. Just your thoughts on that first half. Uh, they, we just got out toughed a little bit. You know, we had some basket area shots that we missed early that could have helped with the spread. And, and then they're definitely getting to the basket area way too easy and scoring. So we're going to have to clean that up if we're going to have a chance to win the second half. Thanks for your time. Yep. Back to you guys. Thanks a lot, Bo. Stick around, everybody. Too terrific. Tony Lecture, Health Market Student Athletes of the Week to me in our St. Joe County Police Department halftime report. Mishawaka leading Penn 24-20 at the break on 46. We have a pair of fantastic individual sport athletes here on our 46 student athletes of the week this week presented by Tony Letcher with Health Markets. Bo Brabender, Mishawaka senior wrestler, alongside Lily Christensen, the six-time state champion swimmer from Penn. Lily, we'll start with you. Congratulations on an outstanding career. You also have a 4.11 GPA. But let's talk about swimming. Six-time state champion, including three just 10 days ago. Wrap up your career and what it has meant to you. Uh, it's been absolutely amazing. Uh, Penn High School has given me so much, the team atmosphere and everything. I couldn't be more grateful for what I've been given. Um, and it was my goal to go out there this year, get three more titles, uh, and get my 50 free back, and that's exactly what I did. Uh, as long as we got state runner-up, so that was a huge goal of ours as well, so yeah. You're going to NC State, so you'll be a Division One swimmer, but you're also gonna major in engineering. Tell us why NC State and why engineering? Um, the recruiting process was stressful, but I chose NC State because of the family atmosphere uh, and the coaching staff. I went there and I was like, oh, I want to be a part of this. Uh, engineering, um, I've taken a lot of math classes and it's a good degree and I enjoy math, so why not? How has Penn prepared you for the next level, both academically and athletically? Um, honestly, they've done a lot for me uh, academically. Uh, great math classes, different college courses and things like that. I feel very prepared. Um, athletically, we have a great strength program, um, and swim has obviously been on top for a while now, so yeah. Lily, thank you very much. Congratulations. Yes, thank you for having me. Bo Broadbender, Mishawaka senior wrestler, has a distinct honor of being a four-time, made it to the state finals four times in four different weight classes. What does that mean to you to be able to have that type of recognition over the last four years of your career? Um, it definitely means a lot. Um, wrestling is one of the hardest sports, and especially in Indiana, being one class, it just statewide recognition from everybody. It feels great. You transferred here and have been here for three years. What has being a Mishawaka caveman meant to you? Uh, it's been a lot. Um, my mom actually was a Mishawaka caveman, so um, coming here, I kind of knew what, what I needed to represent as a caveman. The culture here is just so deep. Like, even here in the cave, how old the cave is and everything, like, culture runs deep, especially with the wrestling program. So I knew what I needed to stand up to. All right, you gave mom a shout out already. Who else do you want to give a shout out that's helped you get to where you are right now in your life? Uh, definitely my dad. Definitely my dad for taking me to those late practices that I didn't want to go to or lifting when I needed to um, and holding me accountable. Bo, thank you very much. Congratulations. Lily, congratulations one more time. Bo Brabrender, Lily Christensen, our 46 student athletes of the week presented by Tony Letcher with Health Markets. We have your first half stats and highlights right after this. You're watching the TV 46 game of the week. This edition of the 46 Game of the Week being brought to you in part by Bills Heating, keeping families and businesses comfortable since 1951. 24-20, Mishawaka leads it here at the half inside the fabled cave. Chuck Nodge courtside tonight. And defenses have been very good for both teams. That's what they are. And it's been physical because that's what they are. Yeah, and the officials have let that physicality play out a little bit. The shot selection hasn't been bad. Both teams have been waiting to get their shot, mainly because the defenses have not been allowing much. And wisely, the teams aren't trying to force anything. So it's low scoring, but it's a very competitive and well-played game so far. So we'll start by showing you some of the highlights for the Penn Kingsman here in the first half. Dominic Bonner back in the lineup tonight. 
and made his presence felt early on. Ethan Good with a big second chance basket here. He had four points in the first half. Trey Miller, the leading scorer for the Kingsmen in the first half. Tommy Herringer got that bucket to drop. He also dropped Cooper Pritchett with a headbutt there. <laughs> and then Trey Miller with another basket for part of his seven. Meanwhile, a lot of slashing to the basket for the Cavemen. Rasan Johnson had seven points in that first half. This was a big play at the end of the first half. Brady Fisher finding Trey Thomas for the bucket. Thomas obviously fired up. Cooper Pritchett has been the man offensively with nine points. And then Fisher himself with a great spin move here. He's had six. And as we look at the first half numbers, pretty even on the scoreboard, pretty even on the stat sheet. Yeah, field goal percentages, strong for Mishawaka at 50%, Penn at 44%. Not much in the three-point column for either team. One combined here tonight. Turnover is very interesting. Mishawaka's only turned the ball over one time in the first half, while Penn has only turned it over four, but versus one, that actually feels like a big number. But overall, again, well-played game here early on in the first two quarters of this contest. Remember, it's a very motivated Mishawaka team. They have not beaten Penn since 2018. They haven't beaten them in this arena since 2012. We'll find out if they can hang on for the win here tonight. Leading by four at the half. This has been the St. Joseph County Police Department Halftime Report on TV 46. This edition of the 46 Game of the Week being brought to you in part by Crown Trophy. They're nationally known and locally owned. Let's get to Bo Hump before the Mishawaka band comes back with the Bills eating courtside report so he can hear us. What did Bodie Bender have to say at the break? Hey, I really appreciate you guys coming back before the band gets in here because I tell you what, the echoing in here and how loud it is down here on the courts is just amazing. But I did get a chance to talk to Bodie. He was really pleasantly surprised with the way they played the first half. They really stuck to their game plan, got it inside, he said they could have finished a few more times inside where they weren't able to. He said on defense, doing a great job as well. He needs to stop their dribble penetration just a little bit more, and he's got to defend that three because he said Penn can hit the three. Guys? I mean, we can barely hear ourselves, and we have noise cancellation headphones. Bo's <laughs> only got the IMP, so a little bit difficult for Bo to hear compared to us. Hardware Plus cheers for the Kingsman and has been Osceola's favorite local hardware store for nearly a century, featuring a wide selection of products and customer service experts. Hardware Plus, where service begins with the words, how can I help, and a handshake. So we'll have to see if Brady Fisher and the Caveman can hang on. Remember, they only played pen and football once during their careers. The Backyard ball was put on hiatus after Mishawaka moved to the Northern Lakes Conference, and last year was the first time they had played. But basketball is the one sport that they have played this team regularly in, and thanks to the talents of Mr. Burton and the rest of the Kingsmen, Penn has dominated over the last few years. Speaking of someone who dominates, that's Tire Rack when it comes to tires. They're proud to be our scoreboard sponsor for the TV 46 game of the week. And since 1979, Tire Rack has been helping people find the right tires for how, what, and where they drive. They're also well known for supporting the Michiana community. TireRack.com, the way tire buying should be. We're ready to start the third quarter. Kingsmen have the basketball down by four. Starters back on the floor for both teams. Nolan McCullough over to Casey Finn. Finn was quiet in the first half, and he throws a pass that goes awry here for the fifth Penn turnover of the night. Finn started the first half, but then Dom Dominic Bonner came in and really ate up a lot of his minutes, so Finn back out there now to start the third quarter. Brady Fisher trying to post up, couldn't get open, so Cooper Pritchett has to come bail Rasan Johnson out. Here's Fisher, guarded by Maverick Brown. Penn has such length on defense. It shows there as Finn knocks it away and goes the distance for two. Finn making the most of his opportunities here in the third, forcing Penn forcing just the second Mishawaka turnover of the game and getting the first points of the third quarter. Baseball is Casey's best sport. He's committed to play at Adrian, but he's showing some adroit defensive abilities here tonight. Rasan Johnson couldn't get the jackknife jumper to go and then fouls on the rebound as he goes over the back of Casey Finn. Lilliard Insurance Agency in Osceola believes in the importance of high school sports. They're locally owned and can assist with all your insurance needs. 
Visit realvalueins.com to learn more. Lilliard Insurance, real people, real service, real value. And I know they're always cheering on their Kingsmen as well. So here's Penn with a chance to tie or take the lead on this possession. And it's Finn. Now Ethan Good. Trey Miller, lots of movement. Haven't been able to get a shot off yet, though. Miller open for three, and the Kingsmen have the lead. It's sponsored by Klein Custom Homes. Miller with the second try. Fect the tenth point of the night, and Penn is back on top by one. Kingsman coming out, scoring the first five points here of the second half to take this one-point lead. Here's Rasan Johnson. He's got Fisher open for three, but Brady instead bowls his way in and is short on the shot and then called for the foul against Ethan Good. Klein Custom Homes is Michiana's premier home builder. Come visit one of our exclusive neighborhoods or let Klein Custom Homes build on your property anywhere in Michiana. For more information, visit KleinCustomHomes.com. Penn has scored the first five points of the second half. Let's see if the Kingsmen can continue their offensive resurgence here. Good, trying to get a step on Fisher. Finn to the cutting McCullough, and Nolan will go to the line for two. He's fouled on the way up by Anthony Nelson, and Nolan McCullough, only a 20% free throw shooter, will go to the line. Michigan Sports Cards in Granger loves all things sports. Check out their amazing supply of cards, as well as jerseys, helmets, and memorabilia. Michigan Sports Cards buys and sells. Visit them on Facebook and check them out on MichianaSportsCards.com. Trey Thomas and Jack Troyer check back in for the Cavemen. McCullough headed to Dayton to play football for Trevor Andrews. And he gets that one to drop. Pin by two. Eric Kuhlman clapping his hands in front of that pin bench. Trying to encourage his defense, which has been rock solid here in the second half. Mishawaka still looking for their first points here of the third quarter. Now two and a half minutes in. Jackson Snyder with the dribble drive. Goes to Trey Thomas. It's Brady Fisher spinning. Couldn't get it to go, though. And two Kingsman come down <laughs> with a rebound. Ethan Good will claim credit. Good really wanted to get in the stat sheet there. Maverick Brown thought about taking it away from him. And he gets the bucket in the buck right here. Good has done a dynamite job on the boards tonight, but a little bit of an offensive explosion as well, as you'll get another look. Excellent job going in, going off the high glass. Foul called on Snyder. Snyder sitting there going, what do you mean? How did it, how was it on me? Good now with six points. It's an 8-0 pen run to start the second half. Troyer for three, that's money. Jack Troyer has played really well in the month of February and he gets his 12th three of the season to make it a one point game. Down low to Maverick Brown. No charge called, but a steal by Mishawaka anyway. Barrett Kuhlman throwing his arms up, like how are we not calling the foul there? As we said, everyone's letting them play. The officials are, the coaches haven't called the timeout all game. So everyone's letting everyone play here so far. Rasan Johnson short on the three, but Fisher threw it away. Trey Miller at the other end, and it's erased by Johnson. Rebound Maverick Brown. I am not sure how that was not goaltending. Nor is anybody in black and gold. Trey Thomas outside to Johnson. That's too strong. The rebound McCullough had it knocked away but saved it. Bounce pass Trey Miller. No foul. Bodie Bender wants more ball pressure. Finn for three. That's off the side of the backboard. Thomas and the caveman on the run. Thomas all the way for two. Trey Thomas now with four.
Ethan Good now. Miller for three. His third of the night, it's sponsored by Klein Custom Homes, and Trey Miller is lighting it up inside the cave. Klein Custom Homes knew what they were doing. They picked a three-point sponsorship. And it's always hard for the cavemen to get back in it against a good three-point shooting team. We've got a foul underneath. We'll take a break. 2.50 to go, third quarter. 10 by four on 46. This edition of the 46 Game of the Week being brought to you by Ben Soft Pretzels, serving our community one pretzel at a time. And let's ask our Ben Soft Pretzel trivia question tonight. Who was Mishawaka's first opponent in the cave a hundred years ago? I don't want to say it's a trick question, but it's not. The name doesn't exist anymore. How about that? Well, the, the name exists, just not as a school. That's what I mean. Well, yes, the name always exists. <laughs> Correct, yes. The school has reformed themselves. A lot of them under, have since 1924. Fair point. Nolan McCullough hits one of two at the stripe, Penn with its biggest lead at five. It's not South Penn Central, if you were wondering. No, no, it's not. Here's Trey Thomas, swatted by McCullough. Penn now wants to run. Good, brings it up the floor in a hurry. Blocked from behind by Fisher. Thomas ahead of everybody. The most improved player on Mishawaka this season has six. Right at his average in limited minutes off the bench. Miamba down the baseline, banks it home for his first basket of the night. Eight different Kingsmen have scored in this one. Thank you to Pasquale Rulli's Pizza on Division Street for feeding our crew tonight. If you want excellent pizza or pasta, Pasquale's is open four to nine, Tuesday through Saturday for dine-in and carry-out. Foul called underneath on Nolan McCullough. That's his third as you look at Barrett Kuhlman, former Bethel basketball player, longtime coach of Valparaiso. As we see Ben Murphy check into the game for the first time tonight, taking the place of Ethan Good, who gets some nice congrats from the bench. White House Cleaning and Restoration in Mishawaka supporting both teams tonight. Contact White House Cleaning and Restoration for carpet cleaning, or if you have water or fire damage to your home or business, visit whrestoration.com to learn more. Brady Fisher was held that time by Dominic Bonner. Bonner called for his first foul. Now Tommy Herringer will check back into the game for Penn, and he'll take the place of Nolan McCullough. Imagineering Finishing Technologies in South Bend, globally known as the knowledge source for metal finishing solutions like the teams in this game, Imagineering. Always working towards a great finish. Thank you, Imagineering, for your continued support of high school sports on TV 46. Thomas down the lane, spins it out, and the rebound to Miamba. A little too much English on that one from Trey. See the clock in the right-hand corner of the tire rack scoreboard. Trey Miller in the corner. Now Herringer down low working on Cooper Pritchett. You hear the Mishawaka students chanting defense. Bonner, a great pass. A good job there by Penn after a great pass, not forcing the shot when it wasn't there. Bonner forces a shot there, though, that <laughs> wouldn't go. And the rebound comes to Jack Troyer. Now Fisher all the way down, took a difficult shot. And the rebound to Penn. That is not what Bodie Bender was looking for. Penn Boosters always cheering on the Kingsmen. Last year, the Boosters awarded over 79,000 to various academic clubs and teams. Support the Penn, Booster, Penn Boosters by following them on Facebook or going to pennboosters.org. Now it looks as though Penn wants to hold for the last shot since they have the five-point lead. Plus, they've been burned twice at the end of quarters by Mishawaka, so you can't blame them. This game's health tip brought to you by Health Flicker reminds you that good vision is key to success 
on the field and in the classroom, health and covers medical, dental, vision, and more. Miamba for three. Wow! We have had some incredible plays at the end of the quarters, and Peyton Miyama dials one up, sponsored by Klein Custom Homes. The step back three puts Penn up by eight, headed to the fourth on 46. This edition of the 46 Game of the Week being brought to you in part by HealthLink, your community health center. Let's go to Bo Hunt for a Bills hitting courtside report. What was the difference for Penn in the third quarter? I think two things on that third quarter which was really a difference. One, Penn was defending the inside just a little bit more, a little bit more aggressive, getting into the body of the big guys inside, especially with Fisher. On the other end, Mishawaka wasn't able to finish. They just weren't taking into the hoop as strong. When they had somebody in their face, they were taking some contested shots where they might have been able to maybe dish it back out and restart the offense, just forcing it just a little bit too much, guys. All right, let's answer our Ben Soft Pretzel trivia question. The first opponent for Mishawaka in the cave on December 27, 1924, Brazil High School came in. It's now Northview High School. Mishawaka lost that game 32-14. Northview will come celebrate the 100th anniversary of the cave on the first Saturday of 2025 next year. Penn, Who knows? We might be here. Penn only scored 20 points in the first four quarters. They scored 19 in the third, outscoring Mishawaka 19 to seven in that quarter. And another turnover by the Cavemen. Ben Soft Pretzels has been supporting high school athletics since 20, 2008. They believe that sports are an important part of a well-rounded education and are proud to support the next generation of athletes. Thank you, Ben Soft Pretzels, for being our sponsor of our trivia question. Dominic Bonner with the bucket and the bump. Welcome back. Showing some strength as he goes in strong and drew the foul on Jackson Snyder. Michiana Sports Cards in Granger loves all things sports. Check out their amazing supply of cards as well as jerseys, helmets, and memorabilia. Michiana Sports Cards buys and sells. Visit them on Facebook and check them out at michianasportscards.com. You mentioned the burst by Penn offensively, but the top Mishawaka scorers, Pritchard and Johnson, were kept off the scoreboard in the third quarter by Penn. And that's another reason the Kingsmen have made this surge and now lead by 10. Here's Johnson Ooh. swatted away by Bonner. That one was knocked almost all the way to Edwardsburg. Uh, he crushed that thing. He rattled the cave. Let's take a look at that replay here. Bonner comes over, showing those defensive efforts from football. He was a all-conference defensive back for Corey Yeoman's team. Fisher for three. That's short. And the rebound still batted around. It'll go to Penn. We'll take a quick timeout. 6.45 to go in the fourth. Penn by 10 on 46. This edition of the 46 Game of the Week being brought to us in part by the IHSA, keeping education in front of athletics. Fine Custom Homes is Michiana's premier home builder. Come visit one of our exclusive neighborhoods or let Klein Custom Homes build on your property anywhere in Michiana. For more information, visit us at kleincustomhomes.com. The Penn Kingsmen trying to continue their domination of Mishawaka on the hardwood. And lead it by 10 here in the fourth after trailing by four at halftime. Nice move by Maverick Brown, erased by Trey Thomas, but Penn gets the ball back and can take a little more time off the clock. Visit Monterey Mexican in Mishawaka and discover outstanding authentic Mexican dishes. Oh, oh, that was an authentic play for the bucket for Ethan Good. Open seven days a week. Make Monterey Mexican your dine-in or carry-out destination. Good has had a terrific night. Eight points, solid defense, and excellent rebounding. Meanwhile, Mishawaka looks very much out of sync offensively right now. 
It is just hard to imagine the way they played in that first half to only have seven points here in the second half. Johnson deep three, that rims out. And the cavemen have gotten completely out of character offensively right now. Well, I think they're settling for the only opportunities they're starting to get. And that's certainly going to be from the outside because Penn will let you, Mishawaka, shoot that all night long because of their low percentages as just a 26% three point shooting team. THK Law LLP is a proud supporter of high school athletics. THK Law has been helping Michigan families with estate planning, elder law, business matters, and litigation over 25 years. Visit THKLaw.com. 4.58 to go, Penn by 12 on 46. And this edition of the 46 Game of the Week being brought to you by API St. Andrews. 31 years of success. Penn call timeout. That's sponsored by Klein Custom Homes. Meanwhile, White House Cleaning and Restoration sponsoring our factoids. And these were the numbers coming into the night. But you can add three more to Trey Miller's total. He now has 51. Mishawaka only has one three-pointer tonight, so it's 83 as a team. So you can see what a difference maker Miller is. And in this game, when you consider he's hit three threes, uh, that's a huge difference right now for Penn. Well, no question. And he, he's not only made a lot of threes, he does it at a very high volume and percentage-wise, 42% on the year. So he is certainly a different maker in that regard. Floor Coverings International of Michiana salutes the Kingsmen. Whether you're looking for tile, carpet, hardware, or luxury vinyl, they can help transform your home into your dream home. Visit michiana.floringscoverings.com. Let's try that again. Michiana.FloorCoveringsInternational.com. They'll still pay. <laughs> Here's Maverick Brown outside for Penn. And now Ethan Good. Good working inside against Cooper Pritchett. Nolan McCullough, the Kingsman. Happy to be patient here. Just drizzle time off the clock. And Brown is fouled that time as it was Landon Johns, the sophomore who came over and fouled him. Hardware Plus cheers for the Kingsman and has been Osceola's favorite local hardware store for nearly a century, featuring a wide selection of products and customer service experts. Hardware Plus, where service begins with the words, how can I help, and a handshake. Brown catches the lob pass in traffic, as you would expect an all NIC strong safety to do. Good with a nice move. And now Bonner will dribble all over the place and wave off the basket. The foul is on the floor before the shot. Dominic says, but it was so good, man. <laughs> You'll see it again on the 46 replay. And I can see I can see why he'd be disappointed. But you don't get the continuation. Maverick Brown got it to go. Brown with six tonight. But it has been defense, as has usually been the case for the Kingsmen this year. That has made the difference in this one. Johns. Pritchett finally back on the board. He has 11 and a timeout called by Mishawaka. 3.32 to go in regulation. 10.45, Mishawaka 33 on 46. This edition of the TV 46 High School Basketball Game of the Week is being brought to you in part by Tire Rack. TireRack.com is the way tire buying should be. Take hey. a look at the great Mishawaka band there. And they are doing a fine job in the, in the cave here. As Bo mentioned, you can feel the reverberation in the cave. That's what makes this such a great gym. We'll wrap up the regular season down at the Trojan Trench. Jason Groves Triton team ranked number eight in class 1A this week. 
and they'll take on Hoosier North Bo Knox. That one will go up to you Friday night 11 and Saturday morning at 9 on your home for high school sports TV 46. Jason Groves has won nine sectional titles in his 19 years at Triton. Of course, led them to the state finals four times, including that state championship in 2008. It'll be great to be down in Bourbon this Friday. Penn with the ball, leading by 12, 3.32 to go. That bucket by Pritchett right before the timeout. Anj, you mentioned those are the first points for Mishawaka here in the fourth. And it's Pritchett's first points of the second half as well. So another reason why this has been such a struggle for Mishawaka here in the second half. But they force a turnover. We've seen plenty of good comebacks in rivalry games as of late, so uh, this one's not over yet, despite being three minutes and change left. Troyer got covered up well by Brown. The tough part for Mishawaka, not being a three-point shooting team, making up the points is difficult. Pritchett smooth on that jumper. He has 13 tonight. His season high came with 17 against South Bend Washington. Nice feed to Brown underneath, but it's well defended. And Mishawaka gets the rebound. Barrett Kuhlman wanted a foul call. There was none to be had. But Mishawaka will launch a three here. Johns brings Wayne. And a timeout called by the Cavemen with 2.26 to go. Well, how about that run for the Cavemen? A 7-0 run after being outscored 25 to 7 to start the second half. If you take a look at the replay, a rare three-pointer made for the Cavemen as Landon Johns drains that one from outside to get the big points for the Cavemen. And like we said, hey, we got a game here. There's not 45 seconds left of the game, just 45 seconds left of the timeout, but it's a seven-point game here with just under three minutes to play. Meanwhile, White House Cleaning and Restoration sponsoring our factoids tonight. Penn trying to do what nobody else has been able to do this year, and that's beat Mishawaka in the cave. The cavemen are 8-0 at home this season, and they will be playing the sectional here next week. Well, and if you're Mishawaka, you've got to get back in stride here. I mean, you lost the Wabba C, and then all of a sudden, if you lose here tonight, you're you got a tough St. Joe team next week, and then you open up against a tough McCord team next Tuesday on your home floor. Michigan City playing Plymouth also on Tuesday night. We'll be here on Friday night, and we'll do the game for Wiley and the winner of that Michigan City Plymouth game. I'll tell you what, if it's Wiley and Michigan City, you'll be entertained. There will be action. I don't think it's going to be 45 38 in the fourth quarter. It might be at halftime. <laughs> See Barrett Coleman. This is the second time he's taken over as a head coach after Al Rhodes has left. He also did it at Fort Wayne Northrop after Al's brief stint there. Penn he, breaks the press. Coleman has coached here at the cave before as the head coach at Valpo. A little bit different when you're coaching in a green coat as opposed to a black and gold. They, yeah. They, they're probably not, yeah, it's a little different. I'm willing to bet maybe half the crowd for a Valpo Mishawaka game. Kingsman trying to protect a seven point lead with 2.10 left. Trap is on and a timeout called by Penn. It's sponsored by Klein Custom Homes, 2.07 to go. And the Kingsman trying to hang on here in the Princess City. This edition of the 46 Game of the Week being brought to you in part by the St. Joseph County Police Department. Join the team and help protect and serve our community. Friday night of sectional week, we're here in Mishawaka. Saturday night of sectional week, we'll do the Elkhart Championship game. And oh, what a field they have over at Northside Gym. And the eyes naturally drift to the bottom of the bracket if you're a Penn fan. They played Northridge to a win in overtime in Middlebury in January. That will mean absolutely nothing next Tuesday night. And who will be broadcasting on that Saturday Night Sexual Championship game is anybody's guess. 
because there's a lot of talent in that sectional. And then also anything can happen in that section. That over the years has been the most unpredictable sectional there is. You don't want to be the favorite at Northside Gym. <laughs> the good news is I don't know who the favorite is. I've always been a big seed the sectional guy. I will concede if they had to seed that sectional, it would not be an easy one to see. Bodie Bender in his second year here at Mishawaka. Spent four years at Carroll, was a Jimtown alum. Ball knocked away, and it goes out of bounds off 10. That is big. With 136 left, Mishawaka forcing the turnover and trying to build on this 7-0 run to get themselves back in this. Ethan Good was standing on the line when he grabbed that ball, and that's why the call was made. Caveman trying to get some three-point shooters in the game with Landon Johns and Anthony Nelson. The lead as high as 14 for Penn when it was 45-31. John spinning, hitting. Timeout, Mishawaka. Make it a 9-0 Mishawaka run as they battle back from two touchdowns down to be a field goal and safety away from tying this one. Great Landon, job by Johns. He's a 6-1 sophomore, moved up to the team midpoint of the season a little bit before that and he has been a pretty steady contributor at 13 in their game against Chesterton known more for his three point shooting well, and now it, now you got to get the steals right and here's the thing they're already at four fouls so any foul Mishawaka commits the rest of the game will send Penn to the free throw line the good news for Penn is they have McCullough trigger the inbounds pass, which makes sense, quarterback on the football team. It also takes him away from being likely to be fouled when he catches the ball because he's the worst free throw shooter on the floor. Yeah, if I'm Mishawaka, I just, or I just leave him wide open. And a foul committed there against Ben Murphy, who has only been at the foul line four times this season, and he's three of four. They obviously must like his ability to hit free throws as the leader, the quarterback, Noel McCullough, surrounding him, putting his arms around him, and he heads the line. But they got to have confidence in him for him to be in the game at this point. He's a 5'9 sophomore, started five games this season, only averages one point a game. Casey Finn will replace Ethan Good. And again, Bodie Bender running his offensive subs out there now. He wants his better three-point shooters. And his point guard, Jackson Snyder. Murphy trying to end the 9-0 Mishawaka run here. And missed them both. Pritchett collects the loose change. Knocked away, but recovered by Landon Johns. Johns has been great until there. Finn with the steal, Johns with the foul. You can see the frustration on Johns' face. Made a good play to keep the ball in possession and then lost it moments later. Here you see it. Good job by Casey Finn. Getting that arm in there, getting the clean steal and gets fouled and now he heads to the free throw line. 88% free throw shooter. Not the guy you want to send there. Whole lot of iron on that one, but he got it to drop. Six three senior. And he nails them both. Seven point pen lead. Barrett Kuhlman wants the arms up on defense. Jackson Snyder, not really a prolific three point shooter. Fisher knows they got to make something happen and he'll draw contact. I think they'll call the foul on Nolan McCullough. Good job by Fisher getting to the hole, getting some contact and going to the free throw line to shoot two. But he's only a 57% free throw shooter. And Barrett Kuhlman wants to take a timeout to 
Ice Fisher down a little bit with 56.9 seconds remaining. Bo Hunt, I want to come to you for a Bills plumbing and heating courtside report and ask you, as these two teams get ready for sectionals, handicap them a little bit. You, you know the draws. You know Mishawaka's got to win three. So does Penn to get through their sectionals. Who do you like in those two sectionals they're in? Trap question. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I, know. Uh, I think the biggest thing is we have so many quality teams in the area that play so physical, get after it. Anybody can beat anybody. I mean, you always talk about the Northside Gym and that Elkhart sectional about how anybody can win it. I think we have four area sectionals that anybody can win any one of those. And it's not just one, two teams. It's like three or four teams in every single one. It's the most parody that we've had in the area in quite some time. He didn't answer the question. That's OK. He's a, he's a political figure. You know, he works in code enforcement. <laughs> Brady Fisher. Building commission. Yeah, I know. Makes I want to see if you he could hear. <laughs> wow. Makes both free throws. So that comes in handy when you're 57% gets him back within five, under a minute to play. McCullough's got to get it in, and he does. And they'll go after Murphy again. Finn made a great catch. And Bonner to Brown, who hangs on to the ball and gets fouled. Brown is 73% free throw shooter. They certainly didn't want to foul Finn. You could see them avoiding that. They backed off of him. So good job in the scouting report there. The good news for Penn, they're sending a good free throw shooter to the free throw line, and they burned 11 seconds off the clock on that possession. He's two for two at the stripe tonight, not down. Well, that was a double announcer jinx between the two of us. Sorry, Maverick. Snyder and Nelson back in for Troyer and Johnson. This to put the pen lead back up to six. Missed them both. Penn just two of six on free throws down the stretch. Landon Johns for three, that's short. Bonner. Got a foul. Bonner all the way, and he is fouled by Johns. Good job there by Johns from preventing the shot and also getting the clean foul to send him to the line. I'm actually surprised Bonner didn't pull that one back out and maybe try to burn out more time, but I guess when you have that good of a look, he felt like he might as well try to take the points. So here's Dominic. And he hits seven points in his return to the lineup tonight. And what a boon that is for the Kingsman. This to make it a three possession game. And that may do it for Penn tonight. Mishawaka's got to be quick. They can't waste any time here. They do get it to Jackson Snyder quickly for his first basket of the game. If you're wondering. If you're wondering, Chuck, why there's been so many timeouts here in the fourth quarter, it's because neither team called the timeout for the first three quarters. So that's why now Mishawaka calling the timeout, trying to keep themselves in this one, back within five. So you say just about done it, does it, but you get that quick basket and suddenly there's still hope. And Mishawaka, Penn's been okay at free throws, has been perfect. The key here is, can you force Penn into a situation of getting into one of the guy's hands that isn't a great free throw shooter? Only 23 seconds left in this one. Mishawaka only has one timeout remaining. Penn has two. And of course, Penn has been in the bonus for quite some time. The Kingsmen certainly don't want to follow this situation, but they can be very aggressive that they want to be before Mishawaki gets into shooting position because they've only made one foul here in the fourth quarter. Nolan McCullough gets it back. That's who you want to foul, and Rasan Johnson does. That worked out very well for Mishawaka, except the only negative here is they lost five seconds. But Barrett Kuhlman telling Dominic Bonner, you know we want the ball in your hands. You don't necessarily have to give it up so quickly. Yeah. 
McCullough now two of five at the line tonight. Yeah, this not. has to be a weird spot for Nolan McCullough. Uh, a natural leader. Uh, tries very well at a lot of things that he does. Succeeds at a lot of them. And this is not an area of strength. We all have our flaws. Yes. Snyder lost the handle. Murphy with the steal. Here comes Bonner, fouled by Pritchett, and that's going to do it. Bonner wasn't giving the ball up that time. And Bonner also wisely did not dunk that ball in transition because that could have been a technical and could have changed the complexion of the final 10 seconds. He wisely went up and tucked it under. Yes. Bonner in his first action since playing against John Glenn on February 1st. And you can understand that the free throws are a little rusty. Here's the key for Mishawaka. If he misses or makes it, you just got to get it down court immediately. Get a quick shot off. Don't waste any time. Just hurl it up as soon as you pick this ball up. And then you got to foul and hope it goes in. Snyder to Fisher. He got the bucket and the bump. Oh, my goodness. Well, that couldn't have gone any better. They only lost four and a half, four seconds on the clock. He got the foul and he got the bucket and the foul. Great job there by Fisher. McCullough fouls out. He'll leave the game with two points. Peyton Miamba will check in. And Fisher, who has 10 points on the game, really needs this free throw. And he'll be iced as Penn will take a full timeout with five and a half seconds left. It's sponsored by Klein Custom Home. Well, this, this works twofold, right? You try to ice Fisher, who's only a 57% free throw shooter despite making a number of free throws here in this game, but also you just have to reset where you're at. If he makes this free throw, it's a one possession game with five and a half seconds left. You gotta get the ball in on the inbound. And that's one of the biggest things they're gonna emphasize. And they got to be smart with the basketball once it's inbounded. And if they can blow some time off, great. But the bottom line is get that inbound in if he makes this free throw. Reminder, we have college basketball on 103.1 FM on Thursday night. The Purdue Boilermakers trying to bounce back from that loss in Columbus on Sunday. We'll take on the Rutgers Scarlet Knights at Mackey Arena. It's the 7 o'clock tip-off. Rob Blackman on the call on your home of Purdue Basketball, Michiana. Pulse FM 103.1. 10 by 4 as you look into the huddle of Barrett Coleman. They've got Merrillville coming in Friday night. Merrillville, one of four teams who split the Doonland Conference title this year. And then, of course, that big game with Northridge next Tuesday in the sectional opener. First things first, they have to seal the deal here. Brady Fisher trying to make a key free throw to make this a one possession game. And does. 11 for Brady. Got a foul right away. And they do. And they foul Trey Miller. And Miller is an 85% free throw shooter. That is the toughest part of this situation. Miller, Miller has not played that many minutes here. And back in there at 85%. And a good opportunity here to really ice the game with 3.7 seconds left. But if he were to miss the free throws, Mr. Walker still has a chance. He told me earlier this season he prides himself on his mental and physical toughness. And it shows in this trip to the line. And he was cool, calm, and collective. He's got a smile on his face. That's the guy you want headed to the free throw line. His daddy was a pretty good ball player at Goshen and then at Bethel College. And the Penn Kingsmen have picked up another win over the Mishawaka Cavemen on the hardwood as Penn prevails over Mishawaka tonight by a final score of 52 to 47. Now stick around. We've got a lot to talk about on our St. Joseph County Police Department post game show. And we'll do it next on the 46th game of the week. Thanks for watching the WHME TV 46 High School Basketball Game of the Week. Brought to you by...
when you expect a physical game and a rivalry and it delivers, can't be too surprised, nor can you be too surprised that Penn continues to win on the hardwood against Mishawaka as they take it tonight by a count of 52 to 47. The Cavemen still haven't beat the Kingsmen since 2018. Chuck Freeby and Angelo DiCarlo courtside with you tonight. And with all the physical play, I think it was the difference of Penn's ability to hit big three-pointers in that third quarter that helped them break away. Well, and the ability to make any shots in the third yeah. quarter for a long period of time. Mishawaka just simply could not score. And I, a lot of that credit goes to the Penn defense overall from preventing them from scoring. But, yeah, certainly Trey Miller was uh, money from from downtown and beyond the arc and uh, was huge in, down the stretch to make sure seal the victory here for the Penn Kingsmen. And this is a very nice win, right? I mean, you get to this point in the year where the draw is out. You got a couple games this week. Everyone starts feeling like you're preparing for the tournament. But you play your arch rival. You got to win. You want to win. And that's a grinded out game that can help Penn in a major way preparing for the tournament. Well, you mentioned Trey Miller. He delivered big tonight with 15 points. And he's standing by now with Bo Hunt as our player of the game. Standing by with our player of the game, Trey Miller. First off, congratulations coming in here to the cave. Big victory in the backyard brawl. Yes, very good victory. Thank you. You guys come in. You know it's going to be a very physical game. First half especially. Tight battle in the first half. You guys are actually down. What changed at halftime? I think the pace of the offense helped us out a little bit. I think we were a little bit too fast at the beginning of the game. We slowed it down a lot in the third, fourth quarter, so I think that helped us out a lot. You guys come in, get a lot of guys in in the second half in some crucial times. What does that mean going forward to getting that many guys in the game? It's huge. We got a lot of deep, vent, lead deep bench, so if we ever had like foul trouble, it'll help us out a lot. Yeah, very um, senior-oriented team. Got some underclassmen as well. You guys really play together just not just the starting five, it goes all the way down the bench. What does that come from? Our leadership all around. We got guys, freshmen, we got a guy freshman who's always played a hell of a get the game. So I'll say leadership is huge. Hey, congratulations on playing our player of the game, Trey. Thank you. All right, back to you guys. Meanwhile, our electrifying play of the game did go to the Mishawaka Cavemen. They had a couple of big buzzer-beating plays in the first half, but the one at the end of the first quarter, Ange, was spectacular. First of all, Brady Fisher had to just recover. Then it looked for a second like he was shooting the ball, but in good form by a quarterback, faked out the entire defense, passed it underneath, and the Cavemen get the buzzer beater by Trey Thomas to close out the first quarter. And we thank the electrical workers of Local 153 for sponsoring our electrifying play of the game. So Mishawaka has St. Joe here on Friday night, and then the sectional here at the Cave next week. Penn will have Merrillville on Friday night, and then they go to Northside Gym and open up with Northridge on Tuesday night there. And our 46 crew heads on down to the trench in Bourbon for Knox and Triton this week. Our thanks to our TV 46 crew who helped set up and bring you this one, led by our production manager, Dean Corsmo, and the killer. Matt Kowalski working as the producer tonight. Also, special shout out to the birthday boy, Mike Doherty, who said he's 29 again. <laughs> A reminder, we've got Purdue basketball on the radio Thursday night as the Boilermakers take on Rutgers at Mackey Arena. Tip off at 7 o'clock on 103.1 FM. And then Friday night, it's Anjan Bo from the Trojan Trench as Knox takes on Triton. We'll have it for you on the live stream at 7.30. On TV 46, Friday night 11 and Saturday morning at 9. Now for my broadcast partners, Angelo DiCarlo and Bo Hunt, it's Chuck Freeby. Once again, the final, Penn 52, Mishawaka 47. So long from the Princess City. <laughs>